This is part two in our introduction to VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Vavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. There are multiple videos in this introduction to VRI Suite Lifecycle Manager. Take a look up there for the whole playlist. In the previous video, we described what VRI's Suite Lifecycle Manager does, and we showed you how to set up passwords, licenses, and certificates in the locker. In this video, what we're going to be doing is demonstrating how to install VRI's automation using VRI's Suite Lifecycle Manager. Let's pick up where we left off in the lab. We're just about to embark upon installing VRI's automation into our environment, but just before we do, notice that in Lifecycle Manager, we can manage multiple data centers. So for instance, we see here our Palo Alto data center and our, our um, Bangalore data center over here. And additionally, uh, in addition to being able to manage individual data centers, we can also set up different environments. Now, data centers make sense. Again, we have different physical locations. Each is a data center, so I set up a data center. But what's an environment? Well, you can use environments for a variety of purposes, but one common use case is if you're using Lifecycle Manage to deploy VRI suite products into your production environment and perhaps deploying those same products or perhaps some subset of those products into another environment, such as your test dev environment, we can come in here to manage environments and set up those environments separately, do the installation separately, manage the environment separately, upgrade them, patch them, again, keeping them separate. Now, in our case here, I'm gonna click on manage environments. And as you can see, we already have two environments set up. One was set up automatically for us. It's this one here called global environment. And as you can see, we have a single product installed in here called VMware Identity Manager. Now, VMware Identity Manager has actually been renamed Workspace One Access, but in this particular demonstration, I'm using a um, version of the product with its older name. Now, I don't want to install anything into this particular environment. This environment is, again, for my VMware Identity Manager that's providing the identity services, the authentication within my environment. I don't need to touch that. What I want to do is go over to this other environment that I've titled VRI Suite. Again, we could have titled this instead something such as production and then create another environment called test dev, or you can use the environments in various ways to suit your own specific needs. But in this environment, you'll notice that we have two products installed. If we simply hover on them, you can see that the two products that we currently have installed are VRI's log insight and VRI's operations. Now, what I want to do, I could manage those different products. I could upgrade, I could patch them, and so forth. I could view the details. I can do all sorts of things with them. But what I want to do in this particular demonstration is to add another product into this environment. So I'm going to go to Add Product. And on this screen here, it's going to present me with a list of products that I can install. Let's give it a few moments. As you can see, we have a list of the products that VRI's Suite Lifecycle Manager is currently uh, aware of. And as we can see here and here, we have two of those products already installed. Now, we already know those products were installed from the previous screen, but what else could we install? We could install VRI's Business or Cloud. We could install VRI's Network Insight. But as I said before, in this demonstration, we're going to install VRI's Automation. So we'll simply check that checkbox. And then we could either install, as I'm about to do, a brand new deployment of VRI's automation, or if I already have VRI's automation deployed in my environment, in other words, if this is more of a brownfield situation, I could simply import the existing VRA deployment. In this particular environment here, I do not yet have VRI's automation, so I'm gonna to choose to install a new instance. 
Additionally, I've asked which version of VRA I want to install. I'm going to install version 8.0.1 in this example. And I also get to choose which type of deployment. Do I want to do a standard deployment where I have one vRealize Automation appliance, or do I want to do a cluster deployment where I have three? We'll keep this simple here and simply choose standard. And notice in this in case here, if I click on view sizing information, I get information about what those two choices would mean. Again, one appliance for standard, three appliances in a highly available configuration for cluster. And additionally, I can view information details about the products I'm installing. But let's actually move onwards and see what's next in the installation process. Next, as you can see in the breadcrumb trail up top, next what we have is the end user license agreement. So I'm going to read it very quickly here, scroll down to the bottom and check the checkbox um, by which I stipulate that I agree to this agreement. I'll click next. And in the next part, what I will do is to select the license that I'm going to apply to this product. Now you'll recall, I already set up the licenses um, for various products in the Lifecycle Manager Locker. So I don't have to enter a license here. Instead, I simply choose select, uh, the select button that is, and choose a license. Or if I had not yet added the license that I need here, I could click add, which is very similar to going into the locker. It will put the license in the locker, but I don't have to leave here to go to the locker. I can just click add. But as you've already seen, I have licenses. So I'm going to simply click select. And when I do so, I get to pick which license I'm going to use. In this particular case here, I'm going to choose VRise Automation 8 Enterprise. So we'll select it. We'll click Update. And now I'm almost done with this section here, but you'll notice that there's a little uh, red symbol here. Now that's not actually an error. Uh, what's going on here is I simply need to validate uh, this license with the product. So is this a, a valid a pairing? Let's find out by clicking Validate Association. And as you can see, we get a thumbs up, green check mark. We're looking good. So let's continue to the next step, which as you can see is going to be related to the certificate used in this product. So let's click Next. And here, uh, it has automatically selected a certificate, but this particular certificate for our purposes is not the certificate I want. Instead, I'm going to go to the drop-down list and you'll notice I see the other certificate, which is the one that I just demonstrated how to create. Again, I don't have to set up the certificate as part of the installation. I can have set up my certificate in advance. Again, this might have been a certificate using subject alternative names, in which case this one certificate could be for lots of machines um, across which I'm installing the VRI suite. But in this particular case here, this certificate is just for the one server that I'm deploying. So let me choose it. And you'll notice when I do so, information down below will change to reflect the new certificate. So again, here's the name that I plugged into the certificate, SA-VRA-01, and additional information such as the various ways that we refer to this particular server. Again, using subject alternative names, I could have added um, a single IP address, a single um, DNS resolvable name, or I could add a multitude of those. Join me in the next video as we continue the installation.